While the Polish army collaborated with British weapon manufacturers in acquiring armored vehicles, there were proposals to design and locally produce such vehicles. During the late 20s, the Polish army opened a tender for completely new and domestically built tanks. As at the time, Poland lacked proper armored vehicle designers. Only the WB-10 Wheelcomb track design, which was proposed by the SAB EMS and WSABP steam locomotive companies, was accepted. Following the examination of two built prototypes, the whole project was cancelled due to its extremely poor overall design. This failed attempt made it clear to the Polish army that they simply had no choice but to acquire more modern armored vehicles from abroad, at least for some time to come. In an attempt to acquire a more modern tank design, Poland's military delegation negotiated the purchase of a license for the American Christie design in the late 20s. This enterprise would fail to materialize, and the Poles instead turned to the British Vickers Company. Vickers offered the Poles its twin turret Vickers E tank design. During 1930, one such tank was tested by the Polish Army. Although there were some issues with the engine overheating, the Poles were, in essence, satisfied with its performance and placed an order for 38 such tanks and a license for production. In Polish service, these were marked as the Vickers E Type A. Delivery of these tanks took some time, with the last vehicle reaching Poland in 1934. During its service within the Polish army, some attempts were made to solve its overheating problems and increase its firepower. The Poles modified the engine compartment by changing the position of the oil cooler and introducing a new improved ventilation system to the engine compartment. To increase the firepower, a new modified turret armed with the low-velocity 47mm Vickers QF gun was installed instead of the two smaller turrets. This modification was quite easy to achieve and was made in Polish workshops. Due to the poor performance of the main 47mm gun, only 22 modifications were ever made. These vehicles were known as the Vickers E Type B. While the Vickers E tank was a modern design for its time, the Polish army, despite having obtained a production license, decided not to produce it. This was mainly due to some flaws that this vehicle had, mostly regarding the engine's overheating problems and the weak armament and armor. The Polish army officials instead decided to build an improved version of it. An official request for two prototypes to be built was made in early 1933. This was undertaken by the Armored Weapon Construction Bureau of the Military Engineering Research Institute. The first prototype was completed in August 1934. A year later, the second prototype was completed. These two prototypes received the VAU-33 Vickers Armstrong Ursus 1933 designation. Following successful testing, the production vehicles were renamed to 7TP, 7 tons, Polish. Initially, the first 22 tanks were actually equipped with twin turrets left over from the previously built Vickers E Type B. Interestingly, the 7TP was powered by a diesel engine which was completely new in Europe at that time. With the introduction of the Swedish 37mm anti-tank gun as a standard infantry weapon, it was decided to upgun the 7TP with this weapon. The Swedish company Bofors was tasked by the Poles with designing an adequate turret for it. After its presentation to the Polish army, it was adopted for service after some modifications were made to it. While the 7TP had somewhat better armor protection, it was still too weak to be able to resist any kind of anti-tank fire. There were plans by the Polish army to produce improved models with better armor protection, possibly named 9TP, but the precise name, how many prototypes, or even if they were built, is not clear in the sources. Due to financial difficulties, fewer than 140 7TPs were ever built. Based on the 7TP tank chassis, a fully tracked artillery tractor named C7P was developed. The C7P was designed to serve as a prime mover for the huge 220mm WZ-32 Skoda heavy mower, in addition to serving as recovery vehicles. Around 150 vehicles were built by the start of the German invasion. The R35 was another French vehicle operated by the Polish army. As the Polish industry was unable to produce a large quantity of 7TP tanks, as an emergency measure, a delegation was dispatched to France for negotiation to purchase tanks. While the Poles were interested in the more modern Soma S-35, the French instead offered the R-35 tank. As this offer was better than nothing, the Polish delegation ordered some 100 R-35 tanks to be delivered during the spring of 1939. Three Hotchkiss H-35 tanks were also bought for testing and evaluation. Due to the outbreak of the war, less than 50 actually arrived in Poland, including the three H-35s. Those that had arrived just before the war were used to reinforce the 21st Tank Battalion. In 1932, the Polish Army tested one vigorous Carden Lloyd light amphibious tank. While Polish Army officials liked the idea of an amphibious tank, due to its price, the British vehicle was not accepted, and instead it was decided to develop a similar but domestically built vehicle. The work on this vehicle was given to the Polish National Engineering Works. 
While one prototype vehicle named PZINZ-130 would be built, it was decided not to adopt it for production. Another project, quite similar to the vehicle named PZINZ-140, 4TP, was also developed. While it was designed as a replacement of the older tankettes, it too was never adopted for service. During 1936, PZINZ was working on a new tractor vehicle known as PZINZ-160. In 1937, a proposal was made by PZINZ engineer Edward Hobbick for a 37mm gun-armed anti-tank vehicle based on the PZINZ-160 tractor. This project, together with the tractor version, was never adopted, mostly due to its price. The Polish army showed interest in the unusual Christie tank, designed by John Walter Christie, which could be driven on standard tracks or on its own wheels. While nothing would come of this, the Poles tried to build their own vehicles using some elements of the Christie tank suspension, with many improvements. The prototype, named 10TP, was completed in 1938 and was used for testing up to May 1939, when it was presented to the Polish army. Due to the Polish army giving up on the idea of using dual-drive tanks, this vehicle would not be adopted for service. The development of a track-only powered tank named 14TP was initiated instead, but due to the German attack, it was never completed. Prior to the 1930s, Polish armored vehicles were usually painted in simple brown-green. In the early 30s, Polish armored vehicles were painted using a combination of yellowish sand, light blue-gray, and olive green, while older sources mention a combination of light ochre, dark chestnut brown, and olive green. These colors were usually outlined using black colored lines. This early style of camouflage is sometimes referred to as Japanese camouflage in various sources. In 1936, a new type of camouflage began to be applied. It consisted of light gray sand, olive green, and dark chestnut brown. The French vehicles, R35 and H39, retained their original French camouflage, with experimental vehicles and some older armored cars being painted in brown green. During the early 30s, Polish armored vehicles were equipped with removable panels, usually placed to the side or rear, with different geometric signs, circles, triangles, and squares, painted white. The platoon commander vehicle was marked additionally with a vertical red line or a red circle, while the vehicle of the second-in-command was marked with a red triangle or square. Polish armored vehicles rarely used any unit insignia. The sources are also quite vague on the matter. According to S.J. Zalunga in Blitzkrieg Armored Camouflage and Marking, 1939-1940, in the case of the 1st Light Tank Battalion, equipped with the 7TP, they used a yellow or white bison in a circle, while the 2nd Battalion used a cougar painted in white. During peacetime training exercises, the 7TP tanks received vertical white lines, 1, 2, or 3 depending on the company, painted on the hull sides, and one horizontally to mark the company's commander's vehicle. Some other armored units employed their own insignia, but this was rare and not encouraged and even forbidden by the Polish army. Instead of using tanks and other armored vehicles in large groups, these would instead be divided into smaller units and then attached to infantry or cavalry divisions. This would prove to be a flawed concept. Fragmentation of the armored vehicles would cause problems, such as lack of coordination with the friendly units they were attached to, and most importantly, diminishing their offensive strength. The Polish armored forces were grouped into two different organizational systems depending on whether the country was at war or at peace. In times of peace, the tanks, tankettes, and armored cars were distributed into 11 armored battalions. While at first glance these battalions may seem to be organized as combat unit formations, this was not the case. This was done mainly for administrative purposes in order to organize training, make maintenance easier, etc. In case of war, these units were to be disbanded, reorganized, and then attached to designated divisions to act as fire or as reconnaissance support element. This overall process was too complicated and it depended on a number of factors which all had to fit together to be successful. The most obvious flaw was a lack of communication in these units with the units they were to be attached to, due to a lack of joint training and cooperation. Another issue was the problem of getting the armored vehicles to their designated units, which, in case of war, could be difficult to conduct successfully if, for example, communications broke down or the enemy did extensive damage to infrastructure and logistics. Regarding the operational use of the armored vehicles themselves, these two had wartime and peacetime organization and distribution plans. During peacetime, the armored vehicles were divided into three different groups or categories. The first category, A, contained the most important vehicles which were to be kept in good condition and were not to be used for training. The second category, B, contained vehicles that were to be used for crew training, but also allocated to the front lines in case of war. The last category, C, contained used vehicles that were largely obsolete or worn out. During wartime, a few different organizational combat units were to be formed, 
which included three light independent battalions equipped with seven TPs and R-35s, some 11 armored divisions that were equipped with 13 tankettes and 8 WZ-34, and one with 8 WZ-29 armored cars, which were attached to cavalry brigades, and 18 independent and normal reconnaissance tank companies equipped with 13 tankettes. There were also five light tank companies, of which two were equipped with 17 Vickers E tanks, and the remaining three with 15 obsolete FT tanks. During the war, in an attempt to stop the advancing Germans and Soviets, mixed units with nearly any available equipment would be formed in desperate defensive attempts. On 1st of September 1939, the huge German army crossed the border with Poland, and thus the Second World War began. Anticipating a possible German attack, the Polish army deployed its divisions in a large defensive line across the German-Polish border. Basically, the plan was to hold this line long enough and to afflict as many losses to the enemy as possible in order to give time to the Western Allies to attack the enemy from behind. Unfortunately for the Poles, their allies were far from ready or even willing to fight a new world war. Additionally, this defensive deployment led to the overstretching of the country's forces, which resulted in the fact that, in case of an enemy breakthrough, the Polish army would be unable to efficiently contain it. Despite the valiant resistance, the Polish army simply could not stop the German advance. On 17th of September, the eastern borders of Poland were attacked by the Soviets, who had signed a non-aggression pact with the Germans in August 1939, which further complicated the already hopeless situation for the Polish army. With the fall of the capital of Warsaw on 27th of September, the war was practically over, while some isolated Polish units resisted the enemy up to the 6th of October. The Polish armored vehicles generally performed inefficiently against German armor. The tankettes armed with machine guns were practically useless against enemy tanks, while the better equipped 7TP could, thanks to its powerful gun, destroy any German armored vehicle, there were too few of them and their armor was too weak. Of course, there were some examples where Polish armor outperformed their German counterparts. A lone TKS armed with a 20mm gun managed to destroy 13 German tanks on the 18th and 19th of September near Kampanos. During the defense of Petrakow, the Polish 2nd Tank Battalion, equipped with a 7TP, claimed to have destroyed over 17 German tanks and 14 armored cars. Another example was the case where an older WZ-29 armored car managed to destroy two Panzer I tanks. These were exceptions rather than the rule, and most Polish armored vehicles were either destroyed, captured, or abandoned. Some managed to escape to Romania and Hungary, where they would be taken over by these nations' armies. The Polish army tried to sell some of its armored equipment abroad during the 30s. The Kingdom of Yugoslavia tested one TK-3 in February 1933, but due to unsatisfactory results, it was not adopted. In May 1939, the Yugoslav Royal Army wanted to acquire some 120 7TP tanks, including around 40 tractor versions. Due to the collapse of Poland in September, no vehicle ever reached Yugoslavia. The only actual buyer of Polish armored vehicles was Estonia, which in 1935 obtained six TKS tankettes for their army. These would later be confiscated during the Soviet occupation. With the collapse of the Polish army, the leftover and abandoned equipment was taken over by the German and Soviet armies. After the Polish campaign, the German Waffenamt Ordnance Department reported that some 111 Polish armored vehicles were captured. These were mainly used for training, while some tankettes were usually operated by the Luftwaffe for airport security, anti-partisan operations, or as towing tractors. Some 7TPs were used by German Panzer Divisions, like the 1st and 4th Panzer Division, for example. Some sources mention that the 7TPs were used in the French campaign in 1940, but it's unclear if it's true. In German hands, the 7TP was known as Panzerkampfwagen 7TPP, or as Panzerkampfwagen Type 7TP. While the majority of Polish armored vehicles were captured by the Germans, the Soviets also managed to acquire a smaller number of them. How many is not clear, but some may have been used against the Germans during Operation Barbarossa in 1941. Hungary also came into the possession of a small number of Polish armored vehicles. These were remnants of the defeated Polish army that was trying to escape the Germans by crossing the Hungarian border in late September 1939. This way, some 15 to 20 TK3 TKS tankettes, three R35 tanks, and at least one C2P artillery tractor were obtained. In 1942, the Hungarians supplied the Croats with 10 TK-3 TKS tankettes, including at least one rare TKF, which is now preserved in the Belgrade Military Museum. The Germans may have also supplied some Polish tankettes to the Croats as well. Some Polish armored vehicles also crossed the Romanian border, where they were taken over by the Romanian army. 
While Poland was occupied, nearly 100,000 of its soldiers managed to avoid capture by escaping to Hungary, Romania, and the Baltic states. At least a third of this number would reach France to once again fight the Germans. The Polish forces in France were organized into four infantry divisions, with one mechanized brigade. The mechanized brigade was commanded by Colonel Stanislaw Maciek, a prominent commander during the Battle for Poland. This unit was mostly equipped with R-35 and R-39 French tanks. Unfortunately for the Poles, they were once again defeated, together with the Western Allies. Nearly 20,000 Poles managed to escape to Britain during the fall of France. Elements of these units would later be used to form the 1st Polish Armored Division under Maciek. This unit was equipped with a number of armored vehicles which were supplied by British and American allies. The 1st Polish Armored Division would see extensive action against the German forces on the Western Front during 1944 and 1945, using different types of Shermans, M10 tank hunters, Valentine tanks, etc. Another Polish unit that was equipped with Allied armored vehicles was the 2nd Armored Brigade, which in 1944 had 160 Sherman tanks. This unit fought mainly in Italy during the war. In occupied Poland, there was a resistance movement that fought the Germans. During the Warsaw Uprising, the Polish resistance fighters managed to capture a small number of German armored vehicles, including a few Panthers, a Jag Panther 38T, and even at least one armored half-track. The Poles even managed to build an armored vehicle based on a truck chassis named Kubis. The Poles also fought the Germans under the Soviet banner during the war. For example, the first Polish army, formed during 1944, was equipped with Soviet armored vehicles such as the T-3485, Su-85, etc. This unit fought many hard battles which ended with the capture of Berlin in May 1945. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.